This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update, for Thursday, October 22. Thanks for joining us. The man representing the People's Party for Democracy and Development in the upcoming St. George North by election declares he's up to the task. David Walron made this clear after paying his deposit at the Treasury today. Speaking with the media, Walron said he has served the people of St. George North in several capacities and it's time he represents them in Parliament. I have rep represented that constituency from my heart. As a member of the Constituency Council, I would have supported and I would have voted for the support of a lot of persons in St. George North who, were, who would have had mobility issues, who would have been falling below the property line. I also would have had the opportunity as a district emergency organization person, as a, as a disaster manager, I would have had the opportunity in Lily and in Thomas and in other situations like flooding to have represented the people of St. George North. So this is just another move to further the works that I've already started. So it is all about the people of St. George North and proper representation. With campaign manager Caswell Franklin, party leader Bishop Joseph Atherley, and fellow PDP member Paul Gibson and others present to support him, Warren says he's expecting to win the seat. I am confident, and my confidence comes from the people. The fact that people know me, they know what I have done. They know that I am from among them. They know that I'm about them and, and, prop, and their proper representation. The Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados is calling on politicians to clean up their act on the campaign trail. In a statement today, General Secretary Dennis De Pisa lamented that the behavior of some speakers on the political platform is disturbing and unacceptable. He stressed that politicians should not use the platform to chastise or humiliate public officers and members of civil society. The PISA urged the public to demand high standards of ethical behavior from leaders, and he made a case for national organizations to establish a code of conduct to hold leaders accountable. It's safe to visit Barbados. Tourism Minister Lisa Cummins urged travel agents and media personnel who are part of the British Airways Heathrow inaugural fan trip at Villa Tamarindo to spread the message. She told a dinner hosted by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. last night that the country's travel protocols are working and government will continue to do all in its power to ensure citizens and guests are safe. This is not an easy time. It is challenging for everyone around the world and we're watching people navigate. And we want to make sure that as we work with all of you in the tour industry, in the media, that we send the message that Barbados is open for business and it is open for business safely. That we are enforcing the protocols because that helps us to keep you safe. That we're very proud that we're still that country where there is no local transmission and no community spread. And as long as we have that double testing in Barbados, three days prior to arrival, once you arrive, you have that quarantine, that that helps to keep you safe and helps to guarantee that you're going to enjoy your vacation here with us. Young businessman Randy Selman was laid to rest today following an emotional service at the Abundant Life Assembly. The 38-year-old man, who was well known as a nutman, was shot and killed in September. More on this report from Shamar Blunt. It was a life dedicated to family, friends, and the ardent pursuit to earn an honest living. This is how the friends and family of the late Randy Nutman Salmon wanted mourners to remember the soft-spoken entrepreneur as during his funeral service held at Abundant Life Assembly on Thursday. Though the service itself began around 1 p.m., friends and supporters of the astute businessman were encouraged to say a brief word about Salmon. As a man who played his trade at the corner of Pine Hill Road and Pine Plantation Road, many Barbadians from all walks of life have arguably at some point in time during the last decade or more met the kind and well-mannered young man. Older brother of Salmon, Ricardo Piglet, delivered an emotional but at times humorous eulogy as he remembered his younger brother as the one who always tried to look out for him and always shared ideas as to how he wanted to grow his business. Pigger also used his time at the pulpit to deliver words written by Salmon's children as they remembered their father for the wise words and traits he instilled in them. Pigger said, quote, You were so wise beyond your years, and for that we are thankful, because now we have morals and values cemented in us for years to come. It's almost like you were prepping us for this moment without you. It's hard not to remember you when everywhere we go, something triggers a memory of you. The closeness we shared, we can save confidence 
that you were more than just our father. You are our mentor, confident, best friend, motivator, literally a part of our hearts where you will always reside, end quote. There's regional and international news after this short break. from the region. The FSO Nabarima, anchored in the Gulf of Paria, is upright and stable, and there is no immediate threat from the vessel said to be carrying millions of barrels of oil. This update today from Trinidad and Tobago's Energy Minister, Fuad Khan. Minister Khan said, however, a report prepared by a team of experts sent to conduct an on-site visit of the FSO Nabarima on Tuesday indicates there is no risk of the vessel tilting, sinking, or spilling oil. There is no water ingress on the vessel visible to the team. So the ingress of water that was reported in early September no longer exists. Three, and this is a very important point, it was confirmed from the representatives that during the incident when the engine room was flooded, there was no mixing of oil and bilge water. The oil did not leak from the containment tanks. To be processed Minister Khan said even though there is no pending risk to the environment, the government of Trinidad and Tobago has in place a contingency plan to prevent environmental damage. Further afield in the United States, the judge in the George Floyd case has dropped one of the murder charges for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. A judge has dropped one of the murder charges for former Minneapolis officer Derek Chauvin in the George Floyd case. The third degree murder charge was dismissed, but Chauvin's more serious second degree unintentional murder and second degree manslaughter charges still stand. The judge also ruled he will not dismiss aiding and abetting charges for the other three officers. Attorneys for those former officers argued there was a lack of probable cause. The judge is still deciding if the jury should be anonymous. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs> 